well, thanks uh, to all of you who came back tonight. I didn't know whether anybody would suffer through last week and would show up again tonight or not. But uh, we, we are on a topic that obviously is important to each of us. Uh, one of, I think, the most important topics of our lives. Uh, and so uh, the idea is uh, prayer. So today we're going to be looking at what we might call authentic pattern and mountain moving prayer. Okay, mountain moving prayer. Now that's a pretty good, pretty good topic. Uh, <laughs> what we're trying to do again is know God. And I put this scripture up last week because I, I really like this scripture. There is no one like the God of Israel. Uh, Moses is talking to Asher before they go over into the promised land. And he's, I, he's trying to give them, I, if you say, if you can, uh, kind of a, you know, a, uh, what do you call it, a pep talk, you know? And uh, obviously it's a spiritual pep talk. And he says, there's no one like the God of Israel. He rides, I love this image, he rides across the heavens to help you. Across the skies in majestic splendor. You know, some of those psalms are pretty poetic that way. You know, when it talks about the sun and it talks about the skies. And, and Moses uh, uh, uses those words. It says, the eternal God is your refuge. His everlasting arms are under you. He drives out the enemy before you. He is your protecting shield and your triumphant sword. Now, if that wouldn't get you going... You know, I coached a little bit for two or three years, and you always tried to give these little pep talks before games. You know, you never knew whether you were successful or not, especially when you got to lose by 20 points, but whatever. Uh, and most of you know that, uh, that we are entering into a time where we're having a new vision and a vision statement for the, for the congregation. And that vision statement is disciple or discipling, know God, love God, and glorify God. And so everything we're trying to do, we're trying to fit into that vision. And so I'm, I'm hoping that we can take this class and work that into knowing God particularly is sort of my focus. Knowing how God works in prayer. And so the, uh, we didn't, you know, I had all these slides last week. We didn't get through nearly all of them. So I'm going to repeat a little bit of what we did last week. But if I do much of that, we won't get into nights either. So we, you know, we kind of be swirling around here. But uh, we know when we have a prayer, God is willing and God cares. And so we have to, we have to convince ourselves of that. God is willing. He, he is willing to answer our prayers because he does care for us. Maybe a little too far back here. All right. And, uh, that's not all coming up. But. So we, we talked a little bit about that scripture in Luke 18 last week about the uncaring judge. Do you remember? And so some people think that's really the way God is, you know, uh, that, that he, he, he doesn't really want to be of hell. You know, he kind of you kind of have to you kind of have to manipulate God. You kind of have to uh, uh, work around God. You have to kind of get in his good graces. That's not the picture of God in the scriptures. And that's why I have that, that Noah up there. We don't have to scheme to get God's favor. Remember the widow, the other main character? You know, the judge was one and the widow was the other one. And she knocked on the door and knocked on the door and he didn't want to get up and help her. But she said, if I keep pestering him enough, he'll, he'll help me. Okay? That's not the God that we see. That, that, the, the Lord didn't give us that story for that reason. We don't have to scheme. Because, you know, I, and I listed some of those scriptures and Psalms and Leviticus and so on. You know, all you have to do is taste. See, the Lord is good. He'll send you rain. He'll, he'll have blessings come to you. And he said to David one time, David, I, I did everything in the world for you. You let me down. And all you had to do was ask me, and I'd do even more for you. Okay, and that's, that's, that's sort of the picture that we're trying to get here, that God is willing. God cares. And so we're not like that destitute widow. We're not alone. We're not powerless out there. God has given us all the tools we, that we have to be able to, to approach him as adopted children. Okay? We, we pointed that out a little bit last week. As adopted children, we have a rich inheritance. We're heirs. You know, I, you know some of you who have been heirs understand what that really means. Maybe you haven't come to that point yet. But when we're heirs, we are just as, as legal just as uh, viable as a, a natural born children. We have a rich inheritance. And uh, 
we use the term father a lot because we, we, we're like we're childlike because we call him our father. Ephesians 1 5, it, it talks again about being adopted. In Galatians 4 7, we're a son, not a slave. In Romans 8, we're heirs. And seven, in, in Matthew 7, 9 through 11, God is generous. Uh, and of course, you know, we have to be careful that, that we don't uh, uh, get into a hard, a hard uh, uh, way of accepting his gifts. He gives us what we ask for, okay? Now, you know, we always go back into these times when I don't think the Lord ever answered my prayer. That's 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 the part that, that kind of, you know, grabs into our faith a lot. So, God is able. Dale mentioned, I think, in his lesson two or three weeks ago, and, and I mentioned to him that he said that the other day. He said, uh, you know, uh, you, can, you can ask God for the impossible. Now, that, you know, we have a tough time being led to believe that, you know, there, you know, but remember Mary, when she was uh, having, uh, she was at that wedding, you know, they ran out of wine and that's an impossible situation. I mean, it's kind of physical and all of that, but that was an impossible situation, but Jesus was right there. I mean, why he got into that, that way, I, I have the idea, except he loved his mother, just like he loves us. And so he gave them water turned into wine. I don't remember now how many, uh, you know, a big old, uh, what's the word, master, uh, jars. That, you know, he changed water into wine. But uh, what we what we need to do really is to is to pray for helplessness. And I want to get to that again. Just a minute. we know that God has power over nature. I don't, I don't have to spend a lot of time. You know, Exodus fourteen, the Red Sea, Joshua three, crossing over the Jordan River, uh, Mark four, Jesus out in the boat. Okay, we know God has that kind of power, but sometimes we just kind of look over that and we say, well, I don't think he would answer my prayer. Okay, but what I'm trying to do is to get us to get past that part of it. Okay, and I, and I fall just as guilty uh, as probably as, as, as all of you on, on some of that, as all of us. God's power over circumstances. Remember when Peter was in jail, you know, <laughs> he was lying there. Very comforting. Come here, come here. Uh, you can can sue with Amy if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you sit wherever you want to sit. Yeah. Uh, but you remember that situation? Peter was lying in jail. There were, I think, there were four uh, pairs of soldiers in there guarding him. You know, I'm assuming there were two here, two here, two here, two here. And uh, he was sound asleep. And remember, the angel came in. Peter didn't even know what really was happening. He didn't even know that he would. Later on, he knew it was an angel. But you talk about the impossible. Now, that was Jesus working. The Jesus who never changes. The God who never changes. I, I, I don't profess to know exactly how God works. But I know the scriptures tell us that he answers prayers. Okay? And so... Uh, he, uh, he uh, the, the, all the people around him were unceasing in their prayers. Remember, and even when Peter got out, knocked on the door, they didn't even believe that was him. So there's always a lot of unbelief. At the same time, there is belief and faith. You know, you have to you have to work around those in our humanness. And so uh, we, uh, but we know that Jesus has power over circumstances. Uh, God does. We know that God has power over the lives. He can change people's hearts. Remember, he, Moses didn't think he could talk. I mean, he really didn't want to be a leader, I guess. Maybe for various reasons. Uh, Saul became Paul. Peter became, he stayed kind of impulsive, but he certainly became a, from a denier to a, a, a follower that was crucified with Christ. So, so God, we know, is able. Okay? And then I, and, and the, the point that I'm trying to lead up to is, God is the same God today that he was then. He never changes. Now, how deeply do you want to, how deeply do we go into that? You know, how deeply do we believe that? You know, it's easy to say, well, he doesn't act that same way today. Okay. Well, the burden is on us when we say that, really, isn't it? Okay. They prayed the impossible. Backed up waters all the way back up the Red Sea. Backed up waters all the way to the town of Adam. When they crossed the Jordan, you know, God did that. Well, what makes us think he couldn't do that today? Okay. 
Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. That's kind of where we're going because he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all you do is look at those scriptures. I won't take time to look at them. But all of them talk about God not changing and Christ not changing. Oh, they don't change. Okay. All right. All right. So I want to go back to this little, little uh, diagram that I gave you last week. Okay. Because that kind of spoke to me a little bit. Uh, in every prayer, every situation that's hard, that's difficult, that brings us to our knees, that's beyond the ordinary, if I can call that, call it that. We have hope on this side, this variable. Then we have time at the bottom here on this variable. And those two kind of conflict with one another. If we get into a situation, a reality, say cancer, say uh, a marital situation, say... I don't know, all these really, really tough situations that bring us to our knees, okay? Uh, the, you know, situations in the country, situations in the world, <laughs> you know, anything like that, we have, or we develop hope that that will be uh, corrected, that will be uh, changed, that will be, uh, our, our, our hope will be met. Does that part of the little diagram make sense to you? I could call it the problem that we're praying about. I could simply call it this is the reality. Maybe maybe we're maybe we're born. We have we give birth to a child that is not that may be uh, hurt, harmed. Maybe something will happen to a, a child of ours in a car accident. I mean, all of those things. You know, you can conjure up all these situations, and that's the reality of it. Okay, but we have a hope that that's going to change, and so we pray. That's that's what we do it here. We pray all the time, every hour of the day, every thirty minutes of the day. You know, we're we're always in prayer, but we're in a desert because we don't know. We don't know except through our faith and prayer and our faith in God what's going to happen. Does that does that make sense to you? Why I call it a desert? in there because it's the impossible God. We do everything we can in here to change that situation, right? I mean, we're just human. We do that. But what we have to get, to get back to is the idea that that's God's domain. That's where God is, okay? And, and we release the power of God through prayer, okay? So, you know, you think about, well, how can, how can we get God to intervene here? How can we get God to do the impossible? Which through the power of prayer? What else? What else is there? Okay. Now it's faith, but it's faith that causes us to pray. All right. What do y'all think about that? Before I go on to tonight, that's just that's not even tonight's lesson. That's last week's. <laughs> okay. Anybody have a comment on that? Uh, yeah. No. Uh, today on YouTube, there's an Irish tenor singing. Um, uh, it's Emmett Kohal, I think it is. But anyway, what the song is, My Forever Friend. And it starts out about, I'm telling you about my friend, and he's forever. And when we depart from him, he still loves us. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, it's the idea of forever. Yeah. He's with us, he's for us, protecting us, uh -huh. and then it leads up, and then it, it's revealed that my friend is Jesus. Yeah. It's, it's a really stirring song if you pull that up on YouTube. Yeah, a forever my friend. My forever, forever friend. My friend. Well, that's kind of the idea. That same God that, that put everything into, into <laughs> existence at creation is the same God as today. So why would we not think that God would answer prayers today that are in, that are in, for us impossible. Okay, now that gets into an area I know that all of us wish we had answers for. But all we can do is to approach the power of God. It's everything that's God. It, the, the, we that's what we're trying to do is to know God. Okay, all right. So if you're not going to talk to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a little situation then. Okay, like I did last week. All right, here's the here's the situation. And he's not even down at, at the red zone. 
No red zone, what are we, whatever I called it last week. <laughs> Sean Daniel became a Christian a year ago, has become aware that he didn't really know how to pray. He has seen others pray frequently, at least in church. Since you have become friendly with Sean, he came to you for advice on how to pray. What suggestions would you give him? You're hoping to be able to give him some particular examples from the scriptures that would help as well. All right, now let me just throw that out to you. Okay, Sean comes to you to show me how to pray. What what would you tell him? I think he needs to pray from the heart. Okay. Uh, and then, and, and, um, thank you, God, and also asking, you know, uh, whatever petition you might have. Um, and, and, the, and always say the prayer is in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, the name of Christ. The name of Christ. I mean, um, it, but as far as the body of the prayer, it would be, I mean, that would be completely up to you. And it has to come from the heart. Yeah. It's like you're talking to God, right? Like you're telling him a story or something. Okay. And then you end with, you know, yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, in some way. Yeah, you kind of got into two areas, kind of into the general attitude, the motivation, plus kind of the, the structure of the prayer, you know, how to sort of how to begin it and how to end it. Yeah. And so that would be good advice for Sean, I think. You know, I don't know what you remember when you first, the first prayer you ever led, or especially if you led one in public, you know, that that's quite a challenge, you know, for you. To, all right. What else would you, what else would you tell him? Well, when you're teaching with the children, you talk about adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. You know, acts. Would you look at my notes? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you're exactly done, right. We've done that for years. Yeah. yeah I've heard you telling kids that. Yeah. And, and probably all of you have heard that, and I'm going to get into that a little bit tonight. Can't, can't get past prayer without talking about that kind of model, really. What else would you tell them? I well, think one thing that we all need to remember is that God is not bound by time. And uh, <clears throat> when we pray, we expect an answer from God. Like, so like I'm talking to you and I say, Dale, I want you to do this so-and-so. And you say, well, I can, I'm, you know, whatever. But you don't give me a real answer. Well, God, like I say, we're bound by time. The whole yeah. creation is bound by time. And it's, a, you know, one of the main factors of our lives. We're bound by it. So we have to remind people that just because you have something, it may not be in the time frame that God is, uh, you know, he has his plan for you. If you're a new Christian, especially. Yeah. He has a plan for you. And he says that, all right, this is what you need to do. You need to pray. Well, you're saying, well, I don't know how to pray. That's why Romans 8, 26 and 27, you know, the Holy Spirit prays for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the thing of it is, we've got to remember that just because we ask today, God may think we don't need that for a month or That's two right. months or two years or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we've got to remember that God does not work on our timeline. Yeah. That's my next lesson. The third lesson is going to deal with that very accurate <laughs> idea. And so, and you're exactly right. Yeah. Bob? I was going to mention along with this the idea that the scriptures say that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf mm -hmm. with groanings that cannot be uttered. Yeah. And we cannot speak them. We can feel them and he understands that they can do that. That's right. Our words may be awful, mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit knows how to take those. Present them to his father. He knows the mind of God. We don't. I think when we're praying to God through our intercessor and mediator, Christ, uh -huh. maybe in layman's language, but I think the Holy Spirit's eavesdropping. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he knows our thoughts. He knows God's thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. He, he does. does. He knows God's thoughts. He knows God's thoughts. I mean, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm looking at what you were talking about, the scenario. Um, if he's asking how to pray, uh, it's something on his mind, mm -hmm. okay? And what I would say is, is I mean, basically, and I, I guess I've done it myself, is just fill my guts. Yeah. I mean, just 
but also let them know, hey, you know, you got to understand too that, uh, yeah, God has it under control mm -hmm. and uh, He knows your prayer, you know, but you just, you know, your heart was saying you open up your heart to Him. Yeah. I said, well, he's, he's, he's hearing you. I said, but you have to understand that it's, it's, you know, God knows what's right for us. That's right. God is God. And we're yeah. Not. yeah. That's right. And that's why, like, like Larry said, too, when you talk about, I mean, we have the element of time here that we're dealing with because we want to answer here or here or here, but that's not God's time. God doesn't have a timeline like we have. All right. We have hope. God shares that hope with us. And we're struggling around here trying to make sense of, well, why did you not answer my prayer? Well, maybe this wasn't time yet. Okay. Yeah. So other, other comments on this. What, what else would you say to Sean? To, it's pretty different. Yeah. yeah, that'd be one. Let's get right after Yeah. You know, last week, some of you were, were here when David unloaded his soul on, on his, his wife being David uh, Peebles, his wife being so sick. Do you remember? And uh, so after we were met back there, we, we just had a prayer. You know, because... What else can you do? I mean, you know, you, we can be commiserate of one another, but bottom line is, it's got it. We're turning it over to God. But the, I mean, to me, is uh, it's a good feeling after I get done. Yeah, yeah. you know, it is. I, if, if something's I found it's stressing or something bad, yeah. or you know, um, it feels good. Yeah. Other comments? What? Anything else you tell Sean? Okay. Well. Uh, in Matthew 21, 21 and 22, uh, I want to go ahead and read this scripture right here, okay? Because if you want to know how to pray, ask the Lord, okay? Let's go to the Lord first. And he says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. So you could direct Sean to something like this. You may not want to use that word hypocrite yet, you know, <laughs> but don't be like the, but when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, John, go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you, will, will, will answer your prayers. When you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Now, there's a lot of context to that, that we don't have a lot of time or, or really want to right now. Because I want to get into this right here, which discuss that. Uh, we pray with a believing, faith-filled heart. Why would you pray? And, and again, we it's easy for us to fall into that, that niche. I'm going to pray, but I'm not really thinking that the Lord's going to answer. Now, that's hard to say, but sometimes we just kind of automatically get into that because it's just too impossible, you know. And so we, we, we approach him with believing, faith-filled hearts. It's, and that, again, is fear of any obstacle. And you, you develop confidence with God. Remember, God is willing. That's the whole point I was making last week. And God is able. If we just keep those, if we could put those in little plaques right in front of where we pray, it would it would remind us God is willing. God is willing to answer your prayer, Jimmy. He is willing, and, and the faith that it comes from from reading the Scripture and knowing who He is, because you're constantly bombarded by the world saying things like, "I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure that this will work for you," and I turn out to be the one percent. Yeah, so like, this devil comes in and yeah. uses that when you're praying. Yeah. And oh, oh you're just one percent. Don't even try. I mean, point one percent. Don't even try. Yeah. But if you if you read who God is and and, and remember those things, and that's the reason why you meditate. Uh, one of the reasons you meditate on Scripture is yeah. to, to remind yourself, remember who He is, yeah. and uh, that because that will strengthen your faith yeah. when you're asking. Or when you're in prayer. Yeah. And the more we pray, the more we reach that point. The less we pray, the more we're back to the world's point. You know, we, 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 it's one of those things you have to do and do constantly. 
Now, there are people who set up, uh, you know, like an hour and a half in the mornings every day. You know, those people, they're dedicated to prayer. I don't, I don't do that, I'm ashamed to say, you know, but maybe you do. And that is a wonderful thing if you set up that kind of a habit in your life, okay? Or two hours or three hours a day in prayer. You know, now you may have a mind of prayer. You know what I mean by that? You may be, you may be thinking and, and thinking how God is handling this and all of that. And that's a type of prayer. But as for some people, I actually set up, go to a place. Remember that movie? That 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 lady had that closet. War room. She, war room. What's, what's war room. War room. Yeah, war room. That was her war room. I mean, she was an advocate for prayer. Remember that? You know? Okay. Now, in that, in that, in the Mount Moving Faith, and again, I'm talking about Jesus saying, uh, you know, if, if, if you pray, that mountain can be moved, okay? Problem is, I'm thinking that maybe I have to move that mountain, okay? It's not me. I don't look at, at the mountain. I look at God, okay? Okay? So, faith comes by or from Looking at God, not the mountain. Now, look, well, those are easy words to say, but but they're you know they're 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 pretty tough to put into action. I think, okay. And uh, you know we, we identify what we think are insurmountable. That's what we're doing out in that desert. You know, we we we're going through there. We're thinking, oh, oh, here's another barrier. Here's another barrier. You know, and God is out there. He's out there with you. He's he's helping you, like you did, Peter. And 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 the, the focus in those. In that desert, first at least, is always on the self. We need to change the focus from our inadequacy to the adequacy of God. That's what's being faithful. God is adequate. God is willing. God is able. I keep mentioning that. And then the second thing, if faith comes from looking at God, not at the mountain, I mean, if, if, I, am having, if I am having a terminal illness, what do I tend to look at? The terminal illness. But if I, but, but the Lord wants me to look past that mountain to him. Now, you might say, well, that's easy for you to say. You don't have, it. well, I'm, I've got a terminal illness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. You know, it's just a matter of when I walk out the door and get hit by a truck or whatever. You know, but it's, it's where is my focus? Well, that's, that's important what you just said about the, the focus because, Christ endured the cross for the what did it say for the I don't remember it's for the what's to come. Uh, I'll that. It's good. Uh, yeah, you're joining the rest of us. You're, you're, you're looking past that cross and you're looking to the other side, basically, is the answer. And that gets me through a lot yeah. uh, of my pain issues because I've learned over time not only do you have a set time of prayer, it's I've trained myself to have a constant conversation because you, you have to enter you have to enter the throne room and basically stay there as yeah. you're going throughout the day. Yeah, and interacting with people because you need that divine power to even recognize that the person next to you actually needs something. Yeah, yeah, and you could be the hands and feet that that provide it yeah. to God's. Power. Yeah, and, and that's Otherwise, exactly. you just walk through and you don't see it. Yeah, yeah. Your focus is, is limited to to the pain that you feel, and not to the relief that God can give. Yeah. The second one is God gives us faith as we walk with Him. Uh, you know that you know if you go to that little story about crossing the Jordan. Do you remember that? It was flood season. What is it? Exodus, Joshua three. You know they've got it's, it's flooding everywhere. That that Jordan River ordinarily is. 100 feet wide or something. I don't know how or how much it is normally. But that thing that was flood season and, and God told Joshua, here's what I want to happen. I want the priest to take that Ark of the Covenant out to the middle of that river and stand there. Okay? And I'm going to back those waters up all the way to that little town called Adam. And I'm going to make that ground dry. And as soon as you see those, that, those priests go out there with that Ark of the Covenant, you cross over. And they're going to stay there. Until everybody has crossed over there. Now you think about that. If you're a priest and the water is flooded, 
it takes some faith to walk out there, doesn't it, to carry that Ark of the Covenant with you? Even though you've got God, you know, on earth with you there in that Ark, and those people, you know, and it, just like at the Red Sea, you know, it takes faith and focus, okay? And so God gives us faith as we walk with him. So I'm sure when I saw people, if I were there and I saw people walking across there, I would gain a lot of confidence in that, like you said, you know, you, you, you're a servant example. So they were to keep an eye on the ark. That's what they were to look at. They weren't to look at the water. They weren't to look at the cup, the uh, the uh, flood. They weren't to look at whatever was happening. Keep your eye on the on the ark of the covenant. Keep your eye on God. Okay, and then they expect amazing things. Okay, God is a God of dreams. I think. Okay, and then you take the first step. You stand in the middle of Jordan. You shift your focus from the size of the mountain. To the sufficiency of the mountain giver. Okay. This could be your analogy with, with the desert, why some of us need to be in the desert more than others because it draws your focus away from the negative and it should draw your focus to God. Yeah. Which should yeah. bring you into prayer. You bring you to prayer. The, oh, the, not the language again. The, mm -hmm. Constantly in prayer, uh, it was on the slide before, uh -huh. uh, but but if things are going good, you don't necessarily always right. do that. Yeah. But I found in, in something that you need God on, it's always, almost always on them. Yeah, yeah. And it uh, throws you on your knees more often. Yeah. Can you imagine the whole cost of those people? I bet your prayer was on their mind a lot. And again, keep in mind that the power of God is what I'm looking at, and it's through prayer that that power is released. Okay, and I wish, like Larry said, I wish I could say that every time we we say a word of prayer to God or ask something, that bang, there it was. That's not that's not the God that we know in the Scripture. That's why we have to know God. We have to study Scriptures and see how He works and so on. Okay, well, pretty much anyway. If you want to pray, John, ask Jesus how to pray, okay? And so we do our best by, you know, he just wanted to be a good parent. We do our best parenting by prayer, don't we? I, I would guess that every one of you in here who are parents, you spend a lot of time in prayer for your kids. I know Ann does, you know. I do, and we pray we, for everything related to our kids. And they don't, we, they don't outgrow that. I mean, our kids are now 50, whatever they are, 55, you know, we still pray for them. Maybe how old are you, 59, 49, 48, 47, 46, stop it. We still pray for you. Okay, how's old Sarah? 51. Okay, from 51 to 46. Well, I already have a nice, I already have a Okay, we do, you know, we pray for each child every day. We do that. Those principles we talked about, you know, successful praying is we pray secretly. Now, those of us who, who give public prayers, you know, I don't, everybody, you know, there's a lot of thought that goes into those public prayers. You know, they're not just thrown out there, you know, and throwing these phrases here and those phrases there. Uh, and I think I speak for the rest of the, the, the elders in here that have those shepherd's prayers. You put a lot of thought in those. I write mine out because I, I because I want to think it through, okay? And I hope people don't think that's insincere, you know? I don't mean it to be, but, you know, I'm not real good at just spontaneous kinds of things, you know? Now, in a class right here where you're asked, you know, just off the handle to say a prayer, that's a different thing, but when you explain so pray secretly, though, is what Jesus said. Well, when you pray secretly, you avoid distractions. You've got a special place, like that closet that, what you said? was the war room. room. What, the war room. room. Alexander Campbell, am I right? Spent six hours a day in prayer. Is that right? In his little shed thing that he built out there behind his property. Am I right? Or, I don't want to misquote him. But I knew he spent a lot of time every day in prayer. He stayed out there a lot of time a day and studied. A lot. Yeah, maybe, that may be a little too much, but Pray secretly, pray sincerely. Well, how is that? Well, you talk to God as you would to your father. Some of you guys said that a while ago. It's just like, it's just bury your soul. 
Pour out your heart, Psalm 62. Pray specifically, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm going to move on. But then Jesus said this then when he was asked, this is then how you should pray, our Father in heaven. How many of you, do most of you know that one by heart? Yeah. You know, a lot of people do. And I'm, I'm sure, unfortunately, that maybe that some of us have just <laughs> said that without thought, you know. But that, that would be judgmental for me to say that, you know, all the time. But at least most people know this prayer. It's called the what? The Lord's Prayer, the model prayer. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. At least this translation reads it that way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. This is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our debts. As we have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And again, in Luke 11, it's the same situation. That first one, that first one, Matthew was in the Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus was teaching in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. This one is from Luke 11. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. I don't know that we have that in the scriptures. Maybe we do where John was teaching his disciples how to pray. It doesn't come to my mind where he, where he actually did that. But, but they said he did, so he did. it. And he said to them, uh, uh, Jesus said, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. Let's look at that in just a minute. Our Father, what does that suggest to you? You're a child. Yeah. God. You're a child of God. It's a relationship issue. That's why we, most people start in some way, some fashion, they, they start the prayer with our Father. Okay. Now, what other expressions do people tend to use? Heavenly our Heavenly Father is a very common one. Just our what? My Father. My father. <laughs> some people use the word God. Or some people use the word Daddy. Uh, those kinds of things. Now, some people may not like those terms, you know, all of that. But the idea is they're approaching a relationship that we have with that God who never changes, okay, who adopted us. He's our father, okay? In Spanish, two is the familiar form in prayer. Uh, what is it? Uh, two. Uh, the familiar form of uh, referring to God, two, that's that's like daddy. Okay, it's like daddy. Uh -huh. and, okay. And that's common in the Spanish language. Uh -huh. Okay. You, the word T U who T T U yeah okay. it's yeah it's it's like a more personal it's, it's a personal it's a personal yeah. uh, it's it's the fun saying you but yeah. who is it's a more personal yeah okay well that's that idea isn't it? that real that personal relationship that we are God's child through Jesus Christ who are in heaven okay now the reason Jesus suggested we or, or gave us that model prayer we need to know that that's the creator we're talking to. We're not just talking to my regular dad, you know. We're talking to the the, the, in, the person, what sort of after? The entity, the, the God who actually talked everything into existence, okay, and keeps things in existence. All right, that's, that's where he is. He's in heaven. Uh, he's the mountain ruler. Hallowed be your name, okay? Uh, and, and I'm going over this. Most of us are pretty aware of it. Sometimes we kind of forget that. Well, that, that familiar part is good because sometimes, if you think of it this way, if you go up to your dad and call him by their name, my dad Eugene, that is not as endearing mm -hmm. and not as personal yeah. as when you say, Father. Well, yeah. What are some other names we tend to call our dad? Pops, yeah, Pop or Pops. I see a lot of people doing that. Daddy, uh, Dad, and then there's Poppy. all those others, old man, and stuff like that. Yeah, I've heard of all of that. I don't, it doesn't bother me. That's the person sorts of baby for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how will be your name? You know, it's a praise, it's a worship God. You know, I kingdom come, the will be done on earth is in heaven, and it's his will first. Okay, give us our today our daily bread. You know, you lay out your concerns. Okay, 
uh, you forgive, you know, Father, forgive our debts as we forgive our, our debtors. We, we get into this forgiving spirit, which again, is very difficult for a lot of us. It's very hard. Uh, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. It's the idea of the protection. I'm going through these fast because I've still got a half a dozen slides. <laughs> Thine is the kingdom, you're the power, the glory, you end with more worship, and amen, let it be so. Now, that's that's that Lord's Prayer, okay? But then Anne, when she looked at my notes, she uh, <laughs> she, she mentioned something else. But, well, I was going to ask you, what do you think about written prayers? You do or don't? I don't. Don't. Because I think, now, you know, if I'm just praying at home, uh -huh. I probably won't write it down. Right, Unless right. there's things I just want to be really absolutely sure I remember to yeah. pray about. Yeah. Sometimes the body is <laughs> hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What well, 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 we call senior moments or whatever. Yeah. But I can see people who are praying in public mm -hmm. and they want to have their words pretty much right there at hand. Yeah. I see nothing wrong with them not yeah. Yeah. Uh Some people do. You know, I'm, I'm like you. I obviously certainly wouldn't be doing it. But I had a secretary one time happen to see one of the prayers I, I, I wrote out and devastated it. Yeah, devastated. I well, devastated is probably too harsh a word, too strong a word. But she was really surprised that I actually wrote out my prayer, wrote out public prayers there. You know, and uh, but I have gotten more into the fact where I write those on index cards, you know, and I'll put them if I, if I may say so in front of a commode, <laughs> you know, they're they're right there, you know, certain scriptures that I like, and, and uh, I'll write names down on cards and things in my computer. You know, you guys do, do all that kind of stuff, you keep your prayer lists, okay? Uh, prayers in public, worship, certain meals, link, posture. A lot of things we could talk about. God's pervading power is released through prayer. Please remember that. I, I was going to have you agree or disagree, but we don't have time. I'm just going to assume you agree with that. Okay? <laughs> Whatever it is you're, you're, you're praying to God, remember, his power is released through prayer. At least I think you would agree with that. Do, do you? <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, Sorry. Leave me not into temptation. The, the verses that, that come to my mind in that is, is things like you know, when they're talking about put a hedge of protection around the many things like that or put your, put your shield out there uh, because temptation is going to come and I've often wondered the phrase of that maybe not into temptation but it's more like protect me because here it comes and uh -huh. you're the only one that, that has the power to do that yeah. and I'm putting my faith in you that, that if I do fall, that I can come to you and yeah. can repent. But in the same sense, there's certain situations that just keep me from that. Yeah. Because that would be devastating if, if I fell in. Right, right. Yeah, you know, I just should not be tempted in some things, but I know it's going to come. So for me to say, uh, keep me away from, uh, keep me from temptation is really kind of a vain prayer because we know it's going to be there. Every man is tempted. Every woman is tempted. And uh, we, we want to be led through that. Okay. Lead us through that temptation. Uh, don't, don't necessarily pray. There's a lot of things God has already promised us that we don't need to pray for. Okay. Because he's told us, I am your shield. I am your, I am your, uh, you know, yada, whatever. You know, so we don't necessarily need to pray for that because he's told us it's there. It's those things that, you know, it's like, um, there's the same thing. You never pray for patience. Yeah. <laughs> because you pray for patience, you got situations where you can practice your patience. Yeah, yeah. I'll say being honest with God is, is a pretty detailed thing because there's a lot of things we do that are wrong. We don't want to necessarily, certainly not in public, but even in private, we don't necessarily want to put those out there. Even God knows it, but yeah. You know. Lord, give me patience. Patience, not in wreck this minute. Instantly. Yeah. Okay. And mentioned the ACTS. I follow that, by the way. That is the little acronym that, 
that I that I think I first heard it from Ann one time. And so I I follow that. Now, what does the ACPS mean? A for adoration. C, now does that mean every prayer has to be like that? No, that's just a model that kind of keeps us going and not stuttering around. And even though I know that, in the back of my mind, I've got that little that little acronym going. In the front of the mind, I've got some applications I'm trying to make with it. So it's not, it's not an easy thing that I'm trying to say. Because there I'm trying to remember the model, but I'm also trying to remember what's on my heart. I'm trying to remember what's acceptable to God. You put all those things together, and it's not an easy thing. It's, does that make sense, what, I, what I'm saying? I don't want to be babbling, but yeah. And this is why in public prayers, sometimes it's important to take the, what I do, bullet points. Because yeah. if you want to pray something about adoration, something that's been on the congregation's mind since you're <coughs> in front of the congregation and you want to direct that, yeah. then that's when I take, when I say bullet points, because some of it, most of it will come from the heart for yeah. me, but it, some of it needs to be the bullet points to yeah. keep me from jumping like a track rather here and there right, right, in right. sense at all, <laughs> yeah. uh, so to speak, because it's, and if we don't plan those out, Jimmy, a lot of times we do, we jump like Jack Rabbit. We go from here to there to somewhere else. Now, again, I, I, I'm not being judgmental. A man's prayer is a man or a woman's prayer. I mean, they're not, it's not for me to judge. Okay. But on the other hand, and when you get up in a, in, a, in a worship service, you really have an obligation, I think, to, we have a shepherd's prayer. We're trying to pray for the congregation. That's the purpose behind that. Okay. And to deviate from that, is is a little questionable, okay? So, but that needs to be in our mind all the time. Well, that's just all right. What does adoration mean? Praise. Yeah, it means praise, doesn't it? We praise God. However, however, <coughs> we do that. How? Why would you praise God? How would you praise God? And what are you praising I for? I guess. I think you admit they exist. Okay. Start, and that He is all powerful. Yeah. And you believe He's willing uh -huh. and able. Yeah. Okay. Does everybody kind of understand the adoration? That's why you start off our Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. You know, we, we thank you for being the great creator. Uh, whatever it is, you know, you answer our prayers. Whatever it is where you adore God, that, that, that's the point, okay? A for adoration. What's the C? Uh, AC, the C? Confession. Now, Jesus put adoration first. And I think that's why we do that. Okay, but does that mean that, uh, uh, that you can pray without putting that first? Yeah, you could. You know, maybe, maybe it's almost impossible if you say, Father, I don't know. You know. But anyhow, confession, okay, what do you confess? I'm not asking you to lay your soul bare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I had to confess to Ann today, I have a dark side to my, to my character. Oh. My dark side is when I get behind the wheel of the car. I get so tense, okay? If I don't exactly know what, and I'm laying this out there, so if you see me coming, <laughs> and the kids, the Amy knows, I mean, from day one, I go through Oklahoma City, and I get all tense, and I say, you be quiet back there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, my, that's my dark side. I did that a day with him. He was going somewhere, and I, I, I don't I hate that. I mean, I hate it. But anyhow, I don't have any. Oh, my confession. That's what that was. That's my <laughs> confession. That's <laughs> my confession. <laughs> and all of us have what used to be called, I've heard sermons on besetting sins. You know, a sin that particularly besets you, whatever it is, you know, anger, malice, you know, all those things that, <laughs> that really don't really want to be like. All right, so A, adoration, C, confession, T, Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, now, Thanksgiving, what, what are you thankful for? What would you be thankful for? Everything. Yeah, yeah, everything. <laughs> That's interesting to do because, you know, that gratitude helps your shape your attitude, you know? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? That, that's, a, that's a good way to put that. Gratitude affects your attitude. Yeah. But, you know, people are thankful for a lot of different things. You know, 
you, you know, some people are really thankful for friends. Others aren't so, aren't, aren't so much that way, okay? Because a lot of it's our, our character, what we're thankful for. But uh, Jesus laid out some things to be thankful. And finally, what's supplication? Request. Yeah, request. And why is request at the end? <laughs> I mean, I, there's not an answer to that, but just what do you think? I mean, you got a lot of people use that as kind of manipulation, you know, like with your folks when you were a kid, you know, you manipulated with that thing. Oh, boy, Dad, you know, really looking good today, you know, that kind of a thing. Well, that's not quite the same thing here, but on the other hand, it is a selfish part of our prayer. You put it at the end. Yeah, you put it at the end, okay? Because God is the focus, again, not us, okay? Now, I just need to know from you, how many have you how many of you had heard of that ACTS before? Okay. So some of you hadn't heard it. I, 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 I didn't know exactly how much time you spent on that. I thought maybe they've all heard that and it's just the old beans, you know. But I heard that, and so therefore I I tend, especially in my written out prayers, I will follow that model. And and, and if I showed you some of the prayers that you would see that it follows that model. I don't use the did you say bullet points? You said bullet points. Yeah. I don't necessarily use them as bullet points, but they're there. Okay? You know, and because and, I look out at the congregation, and boy, I'm thankful for teachers, and I'm thankful for parents, and I'm thankful for whatever. You know, what, whatever's out there. Okay? A-C-T-S. Okay? Now, if I shut this off and ask you to say it, could you say it? Okay? A for... I mean, look, look here, don't look at the board. A for adoration. C for D for T for C for That last one was a mistake, but the, the second, the third, I tried to. Okay, adoration. Why? Because it's the upward focus. Okay? And I can see, obviously, I've got four minutes for five slides, okay? <laughs> Why is an upward focus? It sets the tone or the focus for the entire prayer. It's a meeting with God. It reminds us of our God's identity and inclination, okay? I worship you because it purifies the one praying. It prepares us to listen to God. It changes the agenda. God is worthy of adoration. You know, he's our father. We're his children. We result because of that, the children, because of his love. We adore God by thinking of his attributes, his mercy, his grace, his power. All of those things we're, you know, we, we bring up in this prayer because we adore our Father. Okay? Go ahead. We know him and love him. Yeah, we know him and love him. That's, we, just, we just adore him. You know? Have you ever said that to, to your wife or your family? Go ahead. I think in our private prayers, we can do that a lot better than in public prayer, uh -huh. we need to be careful to be respectful yes. Yes. when we're talking to God. Yeah, I, I agree I mean, with It's that. easy to be casual and make it sound like it's more personal, yeah. which is kind of a personal thing. Yeah, yeah. And that is so true. One time I, I, I led a prayer, and I actually used the word in that prayer. I used the word demand. And I said, God, I, I demand. And I went back and I agonized over that whether that was really the word I should have used. But then I think of David. You know, how, how demanding was David to God? I mean, you know, he just, he, he was just very forceful with God. You know, you should, and then Zechariah and a lot of those old desperate prophets. God, why didn't you let this happen? Anyhow, adoration. Uh, confession. That's the inward focus. We, we look up first, then we look in. All right? And, uh, Sometimes we, we neglect this because it's hard to confess. And the benefits of confession are our conscience will be cleared, cleansed. We feel good, like you said, after that prayer. We're flooded with relief that God has a forgiving nature. Psalm 103. God, you know, our, what is it? Uh, our sins are as far away from God as eternity or something like that. When he forgives the sin, it's forgiven. Okay? And so we confess those. And then we're, we're totally honest. <laughs> you know, Public prayers led by elders sometimes we, we, we're guarded on what we say because some people people will write things that that maybe aren't necessarily 
how can, are you guys understand what I mean? That aren't necessarily really the best suitable for public. Yeah, for for public consumption. Consumption, but anyhow, you just have to. But when you're talking to God one on one, I, I can't think of anything that you can't lay out there. Okay. All right, and then uh, T is what? Thanksgiving. That's an outward focus. Okay. Uh, first lesson is five. Give thanks in all circumstances. Jimmy, I think you were born there. All right, we feel grateful. You remember the ten lepers? They didn't feel that. They felt grateful, but were they thankful? And that's the difference. That's the difference. We're thankful for answered prayers, spiritual blessings, relational blessings, material blessings. And supplication, a forward or advanced focus, Philippians 4, and everything by prayer and petition, but thanksgiving, present your request to God. God is the same. God is willing. God is able. Okay? James 1, 5, then he lacks wisdom. James 3, that whole chapter on godly wisdom and uh, uh, earthly, uh, natural wisdom. If any lacks wisdom, ask God who gives generously. Nothing's too big for God. Well, anyhow, I think you get the idea, right? Okay. A stands for? Adoration, C, T, S, supplication. That's kind of the harder word, isn't it? Okay. All right. Well, our, our bell rang, and I don't keep you late. But thanks to God for that, you know, for being here tonight. And thanks for your comments. And uh, next week, we're going to get into that thing about that. I think Larry brought up, you know, what about those prayers that we think in time aren't answered? What do we do about that? Well, I'm going to have the complete answer forever. <laughs> All right, well, have a blessing.